So I'm just rooting around in the bed where I planted garlic last fall and I have found signs of life. It is such a great thing. Even though you plant these things, knowing there's every reason they'll be successful, for some reason it always feels good to know that you actually were. But we're not really here to check on garlic today. I wanted to talk to you about my raised bed garden because I didn't make videos when we were building this. I didn't make videos. It was actually really stressful and we were trying to rush it and uh, videos, making videos at the time I felt would just slow the whole thing down and I just wanted it done. But I do get a lot of questions about how we constructed this. So I thought I would share that with you and I do have photos of the process. So I'll put those in. Um, but I thought I'd share it with you and then I'll tell you at the end a little bit about what I would do differently because there's a few things that I, I, I think I overthought and probably if I were to do it again, I wouldn't do it that way. So this isn't actually the first raised bed we've ever had. In 2009, we built um, a raised, really cool raised bed design uh, based on something we saw at a vineyard in New Zealand. And it worked great for us until I just basically outgrew it. But this whole time, you know, I had, a, I had an idea in my head for a space that would be super functional, but also really beautiful. And so in 2018, we built this vegetable garden. Now the whole space, fenced in space, is about 50 feet by 40 feet, give or take. And uh, in it, we have eight four by eight raised beds and four two and a half by five foot beds. Uh, so we started this process by having a landscape company come in and level the whole area. They did have to bring in so, quite a bit of fill actually, which was, which was fine. It didn't need to be anything special and it wasn't, it was like hard clay basically. Um, so they leveled this all out for us. And then we started building the raised beds. Now our raised beds are made out of four by fours, uh, dimensional lumber, obviously. And the bottom course is cedar and the rest of them are actually regular pine. So you can do a lot of different, you can make beds out of all kinds of different materials. And I think it's really best for you to research what's involved in different types of lumber, because I think some last better in some areas. I think you have to decide whether you want pressure treated or not. Um, what we found actually when we took apart the old raised bed was that the cedar posts that we had stuck in the ground were just as decayed as the untreated pine that we had built the sort of the walls of it out of. Um, it actually seemed to make very little difference. Um, so we opted just for the safety's sake to do the cedar just on the bottom, which is where the ground contact would be. And then everything else we just did um, untreated pine. Now I did uh, coat the inside of this with something called an uh, internal wood stabilizer. It's made by a company called Timber Pro. I will uh, link to it, link to that product below. Totally non-toxic, safe, safe for chicken coops, safe for everything. So I was really concerned about, I mean, I don't, I wasn't interested in adding something that might potentially be toxic, you know, because we're growing food here. So that was the design concept and how we did it. The first course is pounded into the ground. We drilled holes through it and we just put like rebar stakes into the ground. Just, I don't know, I don't know if we thought they were going to move, but they certainly weren't going to move after that. And then we built on top of that, alternating the corners um, for strength. And we put big six inch long nails uh, through the ends of every one. So that holds them in. And then we also have those going into the layer below it. So these things, these things are not gonna fall apart. The reason I went with the four by fours is that one of the things that really bothers me with raised beds is I hate when they bow out. Um, we had a big problem with that in our previous raised beds and um, it doesn't look great. It's not good for the wood and eventually the seams just sort of pop on those. So. I figured with four by fours, we wouldn't have to worry about bowing, which we haven't yet by any means. So that's how we constructed these. Um, and when I say we, I mean not me because it was hard, hard work. There was a lot of hammering. Um, one of the mistakes we made is that I designed these to be four by eight. But what I didn't factor in was that since we were offsetting the corners, we actually ended up having to cut every single board uh, because I hadn't factored that in because you actually add on three and a half inches using a design like this. 
So uh, we ended up, because I didn't want to stray from the design we had already made, we couldn't really make the whole thing bigger because we had already had the area leveled. So we ended up cutting every single four by four, like, you know, three and a half inches off of every single four by four. So that was mistake number one that we made. So make sure when you're laying this out that you factor in the actual size of your lumber if that matters or have enough flexibility in your design to be able to make your beds just a little bit longer. Uh, once that was finished, uh, this is where things got, um, got, got challenging. So we've got gravel down here on the ground and uh, I don't care for landscape fabric. I have had terrible experiences with it. I have put it under gravel before. It, it never works out for me. So my preference these days, whenever I'm putting gravel down, I've done this on several gravel paths in the garden, is to put down a, a layer of, around here we call them lines, limestone screening. Sometimes they call it crusher run. It's like road base, basically, is what it is. It's you know, really you know, chunky, fine gravel all mixed together, and it compacts really, really well. So we then put that down. Now, the reason we put that down before we, you know, after we put the beds in was because I didn't want the beds, and I didn't want to create a drainage problem underneath the beds. But in order to do that, I also didn't want the gravel coming up too high on the beds because I wanted these beds to be at the height that they're at. So we had to dig out all of that soil that we had put in. We, we started digging my hand and it was so hard because by this point we're, we're it's been down for maybe two or three months and it's hard this stuff is super compacted and hard then we rented a uh, sod remover because we thought well we could maybe like just like scrape off the top of it with a sod remover well the company we rented the sod remover from was not happy when they found out that's what we were doing with it and it didn't really work that well so we ended up actually hiring the landscape company to come back and dig between all the beds so that we could have about five inches deep between the beds. I forget what it was, about four or five inches deep maybe, maybe four, so that we could lay down the crusher run between them and then put about you know an inch to two inches of gravel on top of that. So we created a ton of work for ourselves in that and that's where things started getting really expensive because at no point had I factored in expense for that to happen. So. I'll tell you how I would have done that differently at the end. But anyway, so that's how we did the ground. That took, um, that took all year. We actually gardened in 2018 in this space without a fence, without the gravel on the ground. It was just dirt. It was really ugly. I created a fence out of string to keep the deer away, which actually worked really well as a temporary fence. And it wasn't until um, much later that we were able to get all the rest of this done. So then later on, we added the fence. We did have that professionally installed. That was also a hassle. We had to, the gate wasn't centered. And after all this work we had done to make it symmetrical, they didn't put the gate in center. We had to have them come back. They put the wrong fencing up. I mean, nothing is ever simple in these projects, right? And because I had had such a specific idea in my head, like it just wasn't going to be satisfied with saying, no, we'll just completely change the idea for the fence or we'll let the door. I'm actually looking at it right now. No, I think it is symmetrical. To me, the whole thing seems shifted just a touch this way, but I'm over it. So um, we also did skinny beds along the sides. So that's where I've got the espaliers and a skinny bed across the back. That's where I did the espalier trees. Um, and I've got strawberries in there and I planted all those tulips last year because I wanted an in-ground area as well for fruit and things. So we also had to factor that in and also there was digging out from that. And when it came time to put posts in, we found giant tree trunks from trees I think we actually took out but had forgotten about. When it came to actually filling these beds, I actually filled them up entirely with soil. So the reason I did that was with my previous raised bed garden, we did do, um, what is it called, sort of a hugel culture, something like that. But basically where we just filled up the bottom of them with any sort of yard debris that was biodegradable. So tree, you know, chunks of tree trunks, big branches, pine branches, leaves, anything we could find that would eventually break down, we filled those up with so that we could minimize the amount of soil that it took to put in these. 
that worked really well. And when we took that vegetable garden apart, 11 years or nine years after we had built it, all of that was fully broken down. So there was nothing left there, it broke down great. The problem was that it broke down so quickly that the soil volume just disintegr just went down and down and down. And it personally, it bugs me to have the soil level too low in raised beds. I want that soil level to be, you know, like an inch below the edge, ideally. So I top off these beds every year because the soil just kind of does compact over time. But when you've got a lot of things breaking down, it really goes down quick, like it will go down a foot in a year. And then you can't put more of that stuff on top of it. So what are you going to do from there? You got to buy more soil. And it just became kind of a pain in the butt to do that. So with these, I opted to fill them up entirely with soil from the get go. We got a bulk, what was called a raised bed mix from a local garden center. It was, I forget exactly what was in it, but it was topsoil, compost, worm castings. I think there was some sand in it, um, maybe some manure in it. It was lovely, light, fluffy stuff. It was, it was the best soil I've ever seen. And we filled these beds entirely with that. A couple of years ago, we had to, you know, and it does settle quite a bit that first year. It just compacts quite a bit. So I needed quite a bit to top it off the next year. And I ordered the same mix again, and it was not the same. It had big chunks of clay in it. And I started putting it in and I realized I did not want this in my raised bed. So I actually dug it out and we used it elsewhere in the yard. So since then, I've just been then topping this off with um, a compost blend um, or Organic Mechanics makes a, a planting mix. That's actually really, really nice stuff. So I've been topping it off with that in the future. And then every year I add compost to this um, as well as, as uh, chopped up leaves, which eventually break down to create leaf mold. So it's all organic stuff in here. And I should also add that we ran drips. So what we did was ran the drip. We actually sort of pulled away the crusher run and we ran drip um, along, the, along the ground. We put all the drip tubing in PVC pipes so that they wouldn't get crushed by the stone on top of them and provide some more protection. And then we actually ran them up the inside of each individual bed so that we wouldn't see any of the sort of, you know, working bits on the outside. Um, and that has worked out. I mean, fingers crossed, that's worked out really, really well so far. But I will just say that um, I, the system is more complicated than I wish it were. Sometimes I forget what, I kind of forget what zone is which. So I would say if you're gonna put something like that in, take really detailed notes about what's what, because every year I have to remember what is zone one, what is zone two, what is all on zone three, which I can't tell you off the top of my head right now. And then we did turnoffs at every bed and turnoffs pretty much at every location. It's like, it's a difference of a few bucks to buy the fitting that has the, the shutoff valve on it. And it was worth it just to have that flexibility. So um, I did have a fence, uh, excuse me, a gate custom made. Um, I love garden gates. I think I just love the charm of garden gates. This is probably the only gate that I'll ever have the opportunity to put in my garden. And so I decided I was going to get something really cool. Then we also, uh, we built a little arbor over, over the gate, which hopefully the clematis will grow over this year. And we just based that design on the pergola that we have on our garage and the pergola that we have on our deck, um, just because we like it. It I, certainly doesn't matter if it matches or not. We just sort of designed it after that, but we built that ourselves. Okay, so what would I do differently? Well, I've already addressed the lumber situation, which is a math problem. And, and, I, and I just knew there would be, I knew there would be a math issue at some point. Um, so I've addressed that one. That, that was not great. Um, the other thing is obviously the way we did the, the, the floor. It was all a bad idea. In retrospect, I think what I would do is um, I would have done the crusher run before we built the beds, except I just wouldn't have put it where the beds are going to go or I would have actually dug it out from the beds just so that there was the drainage there. Cause I still don't like the idea of that stuff is, is, is seriously compacted. So even though these are deep beds, I was worried about a drainage issue. So if I were to do this again, I would level the area, put down the crusher run and either avoid the area where the beds are going to go, or I would um, just dig it out from the majority of the inside of the bed after it was in and then put the gravel in. So that's how, 
Um, that's how I would change that. And that's probably the big change I would make. One of the things that I get asked a lot about is the space between, how much space I have between beds. So I should have brought a tape measure out here, but it's four feet. The main aisles are four feet wide, which is plenty of room to not feel crowded, plenty of room to get a wheelbarrow through. And that goes down the center as well as um, sort of across the middle going, going um, athwart ships, so to speak. So that's plenty wide. The, the room in between the beds is it's either two feet I think it's two and a half feet and then the same at the other side of the beds before you get to the other side so um, that is not wide enough to well I can kind of push a wheelbarrow in there a little bit but it sort of gets stuck so it's not a ton of room between beds and I know that a lot of people sort of bristle at that I haven't really found it to be a problem I mean if I have the the wheelbarrow parked at the end of a bed it seems, it seems to work fine for me. To me, I just wanted to maximize my space. So if it meant taking out uh, two beds, that was not gonna be worth it to me. So I would rather have more beds, more room to grow and a little bit narrower paths. I think that is gonna depend on, some people can't, don't wanna ever feel you know, close like that. I don't feel like it looks overly crowded in here, uh, but it is an issue for some people and they wanna be able to pull a wheelbarrow right along. So something to consider if you're, if you're designing a garden, but it's not been an issue for me. One of the little side benefits of having this garden here in this specific spot, which is like eight feet from our road that goes to the rest of the houses down our road here, uh, is that it's very close to everyone. So if I'm working in here, everyone stops and we chat through the car window, or if they're out for a walk, they stop. And it's, it's really nice because we live in a little bit of a slightly rural area here. And you know, you don't see your neighbors all the time. So it's a fun way to interact with your neighbors. And, uh, and I do share uh, the stuff that comes out of this garden um, when I'm able to, and it's, it's just, it's nice. It's been more of a conversation piece than I expected. In fact, yesterday I just saw uh, a large group of people out for a walk. I think it might be, we have some new neighbors. I think it might've been them with some friends uh, kind of peering in here. I, I guarantee you they were looking at the stock tank pond trying to figure out what the heck that was about because it does throw some people for a loop. Another thing I want to add about the design is that we do have a back door and that we just had a really simple gate made because that's not really where, I don't need that to be pretty. But the back door is great because it does allow us to, these, between the beds is actually large enough to drive the lawnmower through. So if we want to hook the little trailer up to the lawnmower, which we haven't done recently, but we did when we were putting the, the gravel in, you can actually drive straight through one door through to the other. So it's kind of nice to be able to get machinery in here. It's also really nice to be able to get the wheelbarrow out that way. And then I have the compost beds right outside the door. So they are right there. Uh, so that is, that's really convenient and I love having the compost next to the vegetable garden because this is where a lot of the compost materials come from and a lot of the compost comes right back into this area. Okay, that's it. I hope this was helpful to kind of just get a feel for what this raised bed garden is all about, how it came together. Do check the description because I will put links to everything that I pretty much ever wrote about, about this garden in there uh, in, case, in case you're curious. All right, have a great day. We'll see you soon.